Okay, let's resume work on that Byzantine workbench that I started in the previous video. Now, because I all I did was take the twist out of this, none of the corners are the same size. So we need to find the smallest corner and measure to that, because the legs are going to fit on about like this, and I don't want them peeking out past the top because that means that I'm going to have to flatten them down. So to minimize the amount of work that I have to do as far as uh, planing end grain, uh, I've already identified that this one is the, the smallest of those, and let's see how big that is. One and an eighth. Okay, so that means that um, I'm going to have this resting on the on joinery and just kind of held together with fastener. So I'm going to have to come down one and an eighth and make a little shelf there, and then take it in a little bit on one side so that it can uh, resist racking a little better. That's reasonably square. I'm going to set that. Careful there. Make sure the right side is up. That looks like it's uneven, but it's just the grain pattern throwing me off. I think. I'm gonna check the squareness from the other side just to see. Yep, matches both sides. Okay. Alright, I have it wedged in my leg right there, so it, when I push down on it, it holds firm. Okay, now, how far in are we going to come? Well, let's see how thick it is for starters. That is one and a half, so half of that would be three quarters. Quarters of an inch, as far as, uh, yeah, that, that's probably fine. Okay, so I'm going to take it in half right here, and only take halfway in on the body of the bench itself so that they'll make a nice flush line with the side for reasons that you'll see later on. Okay, now the marking knife I'm just kind of using to, to set a dot there, and I'm actually going to be using a pencil to gauge a line because I can transfer this, this measure to the different boards pretty easily. Now if you have a marking gauge, you should use it. And we'll, I'll be doing a video in a little bit of how to make a whole bunch of different kinds of marking gauges. Okay, match that line. Put that there. Okay, now let's see how I did. Knowing which side it errors to is important for me because the width of the pencil line is about the same as the width of the saw curve is going to be, so it's going to be closer to perfect there, and we can clean that up with a jittle after, afterwards. to do is to mark it across the top there. So I'll make sure that my gauge line matches that way. And that across the top. Very good. Okay, now to actually cut this. I could use my large saw and like, like wedge, it, wedge it in my leg like that, that way. But that, like the stroke size feels a little unwieldy. So for fine work like this, I'm going to use a coping saw. This is a lot of experimentation. So I've got my three legs right here. It's gonna raise my work up for me a little bit. Yeah, coping saw. Good idea, but uh, maybe not for this particular uh, task. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so the coping saw didn't work, but the, uh, the kerf on this is a little wider, so I'm gonna have to widen that out on the side that I want it to actually fall on. Boy, that cuts easy. Okay, let's try that again. I wonder if I could step on this. That 
actually works surprisingly well. Huh. Well, that's how the Japanese do it, so I guess uh, that's what the tool was made for. Alright, now, just for posture's sake, while I'm doing this, I'm keeping my back as straight as possible, which means I need to take my hips and pull my hips backwards. You should be engaging the muscles in your spine to keep yourself upright, that way you'll avoid the back pain. So I'm all the way through on that side, according to the to the edges. I'm all the way through on that side. It means it's probably a high spot in the middle. So we can get that sorted. So switching sides like that was very comfortable. There we go. That's a good question. Before I start cutting anything, I want to make sure that the uh, I'm cutting out from the right from the correct side on both sides. Yeah, I want to take this side out on this one. That was a good catch. That could have been very bad. little lips here will prevent racking this way at least by resisting because they'll be up underneath the board. Okay, two notches on this side because this one is going to need more support this way. These are pretty much going to take all of their force straight down so only the one notch that the, uh, that the main board is going to sit into that way. And it'll be a flush corner on the outside. Alright. For the square ones, I'm going to run those all the way to the end. But these I'm going to recess in about, about two inches. that? No, I'm going to come in three inches. Snug fit. Good. It's tight by about a thirty second. So should this. The orientation shouldn't matter. Yeah. Now this side is easy. You can just cut in, cut there, and good. All right. So I'm not going to record that. But this side with the splayed legs. I'm going to have to make a cut in on both sides by the exact by the right amount and then use a coping saw to take out that middle piece. So we'll come back to that. Okay, I established my curves across the top. I 
set up the tip of my pencil in there, came down three quarters of an inch, start my line back up. And now I'm making these in cuts. Now to cut this out. I am terrible with a coping saw, so this might not go so well. I gotta offset the blade a little bit so that I'll be able to go straight across without the frame bumping up into it. Uh, remember that the coarser the teeth, the easier it is to turn. So if you're having a hard time turning, use a different blade. I'm going high just a little bit. Okay, not as close as I could be to there, but, you know, I've done worse. Alright, I'm gonna try and bring it down a little bit and then go straight across. Remember, just like with our other sawing, go slow. Okay, I have almost certainly gone too low on that. Gotta curve back up a little. Hear the sound start to change as I get close to the end there. Okay, now something that I really should have done ways back is make sure that I'm going to be on the line. Okay, actually. Hey! Well, would you look at that? I didn't overdo it. Okay, I am going to need to clean it up a little bit, and I'm going to be doing that with a chisel because I am more comfortable with chisels, and you can get nice straight lines with them. I'm getting the, the edges here, and then I'm going to make do the uh, middle separately. Okay. That came out pretty well. That actually came out better than the other side, which I got seriously impatient up with. Did a bunch of relief cuts and then chopped the rest of it out with a the chisel. There's a little bit of a dip on this side. Back from my break, we're gonna fix these on like this. Alright? And we're gonna screw in this way. It is going to be held on by screws, but screws aren't going to be bearing most of the weight. It's all gonna be on the joinery. So the screw is just to keep it from coming out this way. First things first, I, got, I made a uh, little square awl out of a screwdriver. And this spot in about the middle of that and slightly to this way. Make myself a little hole there. Now the screws that I picked out for this are two inches long, and I wanted to make sure that if it comes in, it's not going to touch one of the holes that I've already got drilled here. That's something that you would have to plan out if I had actually put the the dog holes in a better position. They're on the one third mark in from each side. This way they should be on the like one quarter mark. So about right there. So I have to plan around that while I'm making it in the first place. But this gives me enough to bite onto so that it's going to reliably hold itself in this way. And there's going to be, uh, to hold it fixed, there's going to be stretchers on the other side. I also chose a drill such that uh, you can see the threads, but you can't see the, uh, the shank. There we go, there's the first one. Now I am going to have to accommodate for the fact that the threads don't go all the way down. So I'm going to have to drill that out from this side a little a little large to accommodate the shank there. But that 
Like if I drill that all the way through, that's actually going to be more convenient for me because that means that there's going to be total clearance so that, assuming this is countersunk, I can get it pulled all the way to task. I'll just have to be careful not to over tighten it or I'm going to yank this, the threads out. tight fit. I have a little mark on there for uh, in Sharpie for the depth stop. This is definitely the fun part. This is the part that takes quite a while. And if I countersunk it correctly, then that should go in slightly past the surface. Yes. Perfect. Let's test it this way, test it that way. Yeah, that's rock solid. Excellent. That is exactly what I wanted. Perfect. Boy, driving screws without a brace sucks. This is awful. Now that joinery is tight enough that it holds when I let go, so... I'm gonna call that a good sign. Alright, moment of truth. Does it stand up straight? Well, my floors are uneven, but... It's not bad. The, the legs wobble a little bit, but that's because there's no support down here. So I'm going to have to add uh, a stretcher or something like that. Let's see how it feels from up top. Not bad. All right. So as long as I don't go side to side too hard, I should be able to use this to make the stretcher. Okay. So, the outside here, seven and three eighths. I only need some little strips. I'm gonna... That might actually be too much. Let's see. That looks good. Oh yeah. Right, I forgot the one of the basic benefits of the system that I have already. It's these dog holes. And because my aim is to be quiet here, I'm gonna line it up and press it into place. And that ought to do it. Now I am still gonna put my hand here as a dampener for the sound. There, that's my little stretcher. I'm going to cut some notches into these legs, set that in, and screw it down. Because all it has to do is resist mo a tiny bit of motion this way. I think this calls for the return of our friend the coping saw in a little bit. Well, I'd say it came out pretty well. It's something to flatten the top because the legs are shy and uneven to one another, but overall, this works out pretty well. Alright, something I didn't show is that I cut the slots for the stretcher with a coping saw just because it's really annoying to, to film the, the coping cut because trying to do the cut in a way that it shows up on camera nice is frustrating when you don't have an actual work surface. So. Uh, 
Now, you don't actually have to slot it in like that. I did it because I like it. It just needs to be held on there because all it's doing is keeping these legs from pulling, from changing distance way down here at the end. That's all. Uh, that by itself will resist racking too much in this direction. And any other instability that it might have is equally likely to come from my floor because this is an old building. Now I do have some ideas for er, alternative methods of work holding. So for this side, I think I might put a board here and, and clamp it on this way and use that to do um, dovetails, to use a gulping saw to do dovetails that way. And probably still clean it up with a chisel because I can't seem to function without a chisel. Um, I've also thought about putting some dog holes in the leg here because this is a pretty this is a pretty thick leg and using that and another bar that goes across here that I have let's say wedged between these dog holes like that I could get a board and bump it up against that and use that to, to resaw the board or tasks similar to that and I could also do that with a little bit more room this side. And that should that should work pretty well. Another advantage that I can see to this system already is that I can put my foot up on the on the stretcher and it's exactly wide enough to accommodate my foot with a shoe in it. And come at it from this way if I wanted to, or brace it and with a plane or, or, or something like that. I can't tell if I'm in the shot because <laughs> I'm not over there. Okay, this concludes my Byzantine workbench, at least for now. I, have, I haven't decided where I'm going to put those dog holes I'm putting them on the side. I'm going to, I think I'm going to use it like this for a little bit first, get used to how this handles before I try to start making it fancier. But the option is always there. So if you found this to be helpful or interesting, the number one thing that you can do to help me out is to share this video. And the number two thing that you can do to help me out is to leave a comment because I would want to hear from you. And also it helps me in the search algorithm and stuff.